H pi L 3 process it is the third generation of H pi L reactors instead of using four fixed bed reactor uh, which is used in the first H pi H pi a single moving bed reactor is used along with reforming plant auxiliary equipment and quenching towers. So, reforming plant is uh, essential part of most of the gas based process says 70 percent pellets and 30 percent lump uh, are a lump ore along with 5 percent non sticking or are fed into the reactor. Non sticking ore ensures uniform burden distribution. So, sticking does not occur operated at high top pressure up to 5 watt automated system of valve enable to enable the charging. So, this is a typical flow sheet of uh, HYL 3 process. So, as I said reform is the essential part of this gas based uh, natural gas based process. So, natural gas it comes fuel for heating it up this is a reformer by which to uh, get the proper CO and hydrogen content into the gas and this is uh, fed again into the um, sort of gas heater at the desired temperature to increase more when you condense the uh, remove the H2O and this uh, uh, this is just burner and uh, uh, heater not a reformer and those heat heated gas goes um, to the um, uh, reactor. So, this is the fluidized section actually. So, that is where uh, this gas is goes from, from the bottom of this and go up and the iron ore is coming down in this one. So, that is where the most of the reaction which is occurring and the top gases now again goes back and you utilize them either heating and uh, heating of the um, uh, this reformed gases. And uh, then some uh, natural gas to put it there because uh, this is a fluidized uh, bed actually. So, mostly it is in fluidized condition. So, um, iron or uh, actually diameter is less. Uh, size is less in that. So, it gets reduced in the fluidized condition and quite hot. So, you need a sort of a cool or natural gas not that heated which cooled it down and it comes into form of DRI from the bottom. So, this is the um, sort of uh, essential uh, uh, operations of uh, not just S by R L3 process many of the fluidized bed process these are the essential part of it sometime in some of them if it is hot they put the briquette machine to make it into briquette form of this uh, um, hot iron uh, uh, directly reduce iron so it comes into the briquette form. So, descent rays is controlled by rotary valve at the exit of the reactors. So, here you have a rotary valve uh, by which you control this exit uh, um, descent rate. Hot reducing gases are fed from the top and the cooling gases are injected from the bottom part of the reactors as said before. So, cool DRI is discharged through a sealing mechanism. Combustion chamber is installed at the reducing gauge inlet to maintain highest possible temperature. Partial combustion improves the carburizing efficiency of the gas and independent reforming and reduction reaction help the stabilization of the operation in the reformer. So, these are the features of H by L process of fluidized bed one. Bed one. I remember Midrex process is not a fluidized bed process, it is a just a peg bed process. So, that is a basic difference and most of the uh, production I think almost 67 percent or so as we saw in the that figure comes through this uh, uh, of the world and uh, remaining uh, comes from this 
and SLR RN process. So, typical problems faced uh, in uh, uh, DR plants uh, usually uh, in the gas based you have a fluctuation in composition of natural gas. So, uh, it is uh, sometimes become difficult to maintain the right composition always some fluctuation is there. So, one has to be uh, quite careful in that one and uh, keep on checking the composition. Failure of the reformer tubes, this is also quite common problem in the gas based uh, uh, reformer units. Sticking of materials, the, this is one of the major problem, uh, especially withdrawing the material after reduction uh, and some low melting gang or something has formed. So, some sticking problem may occur um, and that is quite prevalent. Channeling inside the blast and in the inside the soft furnace similar to the blast furnace product is pyrophoric and needs briquetting. So, especially if it is a uh, fluidized one because the size is uh, small. So, it is like a pyrophoric in that kind of one. So, you need the briquetting before it comes out or exposed to the atmosphere. Contamination of uh, uh, ex expensive catalyst especially with high sulfur needs. So, these are few problems with the gas waste and in the coal based fluctuation in the raw material chemistry. So, uh, though still it accepts a wide uh, uh, um, variety of composition, but it still uh, one has to be careful in the uh, chemistry uh, composition of the raw material. Uh, ring formation that is related to more about the kiln based uh, um, DR processes, product invariable contains around 1 to 2 percent charge, poor reactor availability particularly in large plant, process control is relatively difficult, product cannot be hot charge or hot vircated. That is also one problem in the coal based uh, plant, um, then the gas based plant. So, these are the few problem in both of them and this is also one of the region uh, not only just this the main region is about as I said it keeps a um, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, solid product and so does not retain the sensible heat and in the hot uh, when it you get it the liquid form like from the blast furnace the liquid uh, metal it retains the sensible heat and which can be used in the steel making operation at the later stage. Uh, however, in this one um, because again it has to go to the electric arc furnace and other. So, one again it has to be heated up to the melting point to um, make the steel. And this is one of the reason till now uh, these processes though they use coal or gas, uh, but they are far away to take over the blast furnace in last half a century or more than that hardly uh, even a less than 5 percent uh, is the contribution to the uh, total hot metal production uh, in, in that case. But nevertheless um, due to many other advantages a smaller unit at a smaller press places uh, uh, using of coal these are still quite popular at a small scale. Now, we will do an example and uh, <coughs> uh, this is more based on like a soft, soft type sponge iron unit. So, determine the pressure drop in this 
shaft of a sponge ion production unit from the following data. Um, I try to modify the, uh, I modify this assuming the reduction uh, gases or reducing gases are coming from the combustion of coal by air. So, so when you are saying the reducing gases is coming by combustion of coal by air, so you would be having a CO, CO2 and nitrogen into this. So, like um, like a blast furnace sort of gases. So, under that condition you have to determine the pressure drop in the south. So, blast rate or the gas rate is given 1400 normal meter cube per ton of hot metal, production rate is 2800 tons per day, average sub diameter is 10 meter, average size of solid 4 centimeter. Average temperature 700 degrees Celsius, average pressure 1.5 atmosphere, void fraction is 0.35, length of the bed may be taken as 15 meter, viscosity of the gas may be assumed as 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 gram centimeter second. So, given this data, we have to determine the pressure drop. So, naturally, we need to know the Reynolds number, and not only Reynolds number, we need to know the density of the gas. <coughs> so, we have to density of the gas we can find out only once we know the composition of the gas. So, those are the few essential things which we have to uh, find out first and then only <coughs> we can uh, go for the pressure drop and for pressure drop we can use simply the Argon equation as we had discussed in the case of blast furnace. So, <coughs> let us see the uh, one atmosphere uh, initial we uh, can consider and you know 273. Now, 700 degrees Celsius the process is operating. So, it is 973 Kelvin. The rate it is uh, given the blast rate, it is uh, 1400 normal meter cube per ton of hot metal. Actually, it is per ton of uh, uh, wherever this hot metal is essentially direct reduced iron. So, per ton of DRI, it's, uh, it is. So, it is a per ton of DRI. So, total blast per day would be, we know already the blast rate and we know the production. So, that will give us the total blast per day. So, the total blast per day would be so much nor, uh, normal meter cube per day. Now, in terms of second, we have to uh, convert day into second. So, 24 hours into 3600 second will give you the blast rate about 45.37 normal meter cube per second. So, this is the blast rate. Now, once we know the blast rate, we can calculate the velocity because the soft diameter is given. So, we can uh, use this relation. So, we can divide by the area. So, blast rate per second is nothing, um, area cross sectional area of the shaft and the gas velocity. So, this is we have already calculated 45.37 normal meter per cube, area is 5 by 4 into 10 to the power 2 diameter is given. So, 
and then the velocity and so because it is a pi r d square that is why 4 is coming over here if we convert into diameter and we notice the velocity. So, that really gives you the superficial velocity and that is what we need it even for the pressure drop. So, this simply if you rearrange this parameter it will give you 0 0.577 meter per second the superficial gas velocity. Now, we know the gas velocity we can also calculate uh, we can calculate the inertia number, but before that we need also the density of the um, mat, uh, gas. So, at 700 degree Celsius, um, the equivalent gas composition would be nitrogen, CO and CO2 neglecting other small amount. So, we know it says uh, 1.5 at uh, atmosphere it works. So, total pressure the partial pressure of nitrogen, uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide should be equal to 1.5 and you know this cases which we, we are getting by um, combustion in presence of air. So, uh, air you have uh, partial pressure of nitrogen about 0.79. So, this we know if we substitute in this one so, we get the partial pressure of CO and partial pressure of CO2 about 0.71. Now, so we know let us say the PC of one of them having a partial pressure alpha. So, a other one would be having obviously PCO2 equal to 0.71 minus alpha because total is 0.71 of CO and CO2. So, now we have to use the reaction. So, CO2 plus C gives to 2 CO this is quite uh, a standard one and uh, uh, the um, uh, free energy of the reaction is given by this. So, we can calculate the free energy from this. So, at the, we know the temperature 700 so degree Celsius the so free energy for this reaction at 700 degree Celsius is 3720.8 calories. So, now we know this so we can cal uh, and we know the uh, from this reaction the equilibrium constant of this reaction is nothing P CO square divided by PCO2 and as the activity of carbon can be taken as 1. So, essentially it is a ratio of PCO square by PCO2 this we have done uh, this sort of example before. So, I would encourage you to go uh, look at the previous examples like this. So, PCO we have already uh, assumed alpha. So, that is alpha square and PCO2 we have calculated here is this. So, what now we need the k the equilibrium constant value in order to get the alpha and equilibrium constant value can be calculated using now free energy for this reaction. As you know for that free energy with the equilibrium constant can be represented by this equation delta g naught equal to minus r t log k. So, delta G naught we just now calculated R and T in the proper unit is taken then log uh, then K. So, these are known and K is the only thing which is unknown one can calculate the K. So, K value comes to 0 0.1459. Now, this K value we can put it into this relation over here. So, we can ke get the value of alpha, it can be solved all are known except alpha. So, this uh, alpha gives 0 0.403, so which is nothing it is a partial pressure of CO. Then once we know, know this then partial pressure of CO2 nothing 0 0.71 minus alpha equal to 0 0.307. So, we got the partial pressure of CO and CO2. So, now we can uh, we know the equilibrium composition 
of the gases at 700 degree Celsius and 1.5 atmosphere it is about in percentage 26.9 percent CO, 20.4 percent CO2 and nitrogen is 52.7 percent. So, from this fraction you can calculate this percentage this has been done before quite a lot and now we know this percentage of fraction of this uh, thing percentage form then we can calculate the uh, density of the gas. So, we know at NTP normal temperature and pressure 1 mole of gas occupies about 22.4 liter which is into 1000 so many cc's. So, the density of this would be 0 0.269 into 20, uh, 28 that is CO molecular weight then 0 0.204 multiplied with the molecular weight of CO2 44 then 0.527 multiplied with the molecular weight of nitrogen and divided by 22.4 into 1000 that is going to give you the density of the gas and density of the gas comes to um, 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 gram per cc. Now, we know all these and we know the Reynolds number uh, definition of this one. So, we already got now density, we got uh, velocity diameter is given, viscosity is also given, void fraction is also given. So, we can calculate the Reynolds number. So, uh, this is your density, velocity, diameter, viscosity, void fraction. So, viscosity is given, density we just calculated, velocity we calculated and uh, size of the particle is given 4 centimeter. So, that gives you the Reynolds number of 1242 and what this is applicable where we said Reynolds number is between this range it is coming between only that range. Now, we can calculate the pressure drop that, that is what actually is required or the question is asking and pressure drop uh, you know is given by the argon equation which we had discussed before uh, in those uh, blast furnace example in detail and argon equation is given by this formula where phi is S is the shape factor and um, mu is the viscosity and the gas velocity, gas viscosity, void fraction, gas density, particle size and the shape factor. Now, shape factor in this case would be 1 because the um, particles are spherical that has been assumed. So, shape factor would be 1. So, now we can put these values um, void fraction, viscosity, um, this um, uh, velocity of the gas. Now, SI unit here has been used. So, you can see the little difference in this and then the particle size, void fraction, this is for this part and for this part is similarly can be given in this form. So, delta P over delta L is given. Uh, so, once you solve this is 21.33309 it comes to 330.47 normal per meter cube. Now, per meter now remember this we have we discussed about these two terms and we said this is more uh, pressure drop due to laminar flow and pressure drop to turbulent flow. So, you can see here turbulent flow is quite dominating then the laminar flow is almost not just uh, uh, 10 times almost 14 times or so um, uh, then the laminar flow. So, total pressure drop comes into this and which uh, uh, for the in the whole um, 
now this is on it now delta l is there and del delta l is given 15 meter so if we multiply it with that so our this comes to so many newton per meter square the pressure drop and that uh, newton per meter square can be converted into bar so it's about 0 0.05 bar so hence the pressure drop in in the actually soft furnace is um, 0 0.05 bar so that's uh, uh, the pressure drop now we will talk uh, now we will switch over to the another process so um, when we said alternative route of iron making we said direct reduction uh, direct reduce iron then we talked also smelting reduction so these are the two main processes by which uh, iron is produced in an alternative way so direct reduce iron or direct reduce processes you are familiar now the second process is, is known as the smelting reduction so that is the one which we would be talking now and as you are aware in the direct reduction we said uh, repeatedly that it gives the solid product so sensible heat is lost and what is preferred for steel making is uh, in liquid form and that is how the smelting reduction came into picture or into existence using almost the same cheap raw material uh, like coal more fines and like that. So, now we will talk about the smelting reduction. So, it is a new technology to produce liquid iron. In smelting reduction, liquid iron is produced directly from coal and ore fines concentrates. So, liquid iron is produced uh, directly from coal and ore fines. Liquid iron is preferred over solid iron as molten iron retains its sensible heat and there is no gang material another advantage is there is no gang material so slag formation is quite low uh, in the subsequent process where uh, in the steel making using a DRI to more slag formation and that creates another problem in subsequent operations so now again before we go to describing about the um, process is melting reduction processes which have been developed or commercialized um, it's worth it to talk little bit about the physical chemical nature of it or the kinetics and reduction mechanism uh, of it as we had discussed for direct reduction processes um, so in smelting reduction most of the reaction occurs in the molten state with the involvement of liquid slag which contains significant amount of iron oxide. Some important differences from the blast furnaces are significant stirring exists in the reduction chamber. Post combustion influences the temperature. We will come to this term. I will explain a little bit as uh, you have not come across this term. So, I will explain a little bit later when we come to the process that what does it mean the post combustion. Um, I will tell later. So, iron exists in different oxidation states during smelting reduction influencing the slag conditions because it is continuously changing the oxidation state. Slag forming also influences the reaction. This also I think may be a new term for you. I will uh, talk about it a little bit uh, when I will describe 
about uh, the process. So, kinetic aspect of this because as mentioned most of the re reduction is occurring in the liquid stage. So, so, most of the reaction occurs in the molten state. So, reduction by solid carbon. So, if you sort of in liquid state carbon solid produce iron and CO gas in indirect way even through CO gas it can be reduced. Uh, if you liquid state gaseous state give iron and CO2 and CO2 again react with carbon which is available to form CO which again can reduce this. So, it is a sort of a diffusion rate controlling, but kinetics is quite complex as such in this one. Uh, lots okay, pure molten FeO and select containing 80 percent FeO is called a zero order reaction. So, if the select is containing 80 percent FeO uh, and that is a mixture then usually the kinetic is, is a zero order reaction. And if uh, it is between 20 and 80 percent of FeO then it is a first order reaction and less than 20 percent then it is a second order reaction. And usually this uh, iron oxide is like with carbon kinetics is present by this equation um, where n is a constant and t is the time and alpha is the fraction. Uh, reduced and k is a constant and experimentally one has to determine. So, it is a quite complex uh, uh, reaction in liquid stage and uh, not the sort of a very definite kinetic which is established because it depends on many parameters. So, reduction by carbon dissolving liquid iron uh, this of course, we have seen in uh, uh, related to blast furnace uh, in the hearth region. So, diffusion of carbon is rate controlling and partly con controlled by fusion and decomposition of FeO. So, uh, FeO also can decompose because it is operating at a very high temperature in the liquid state to Fe and O and this solid carbon <coughs> form react with oxygen and form CO gas. So, this is sort of a diffusion rate controlling when reduction by solid carbon in liquid ion stage and reduction by CO then rate of reduction is proportional to the flow rate of CO the rate by which CO is generating. So, rate controlling step in this one is the mass transport of the gaseous phase that is CO. So, uh, related to kinetics of a smelting reduction, it is about that much which is a little complex and um, uh, quite a lot of work has been done, but uh, it still there are many relation available in different different conditions. But these are the main reaction which occurs and um, rate controlling sort of a step or reaction first order, second order, third order order these are the uh, basic things one should be uh, knowing about this melting reduction. So, advantages of this smelting reduction processes are use of fine ore. This is very important actually even in the blast furnace mining and other subsequent operation in the raw material refining lots of fines are generated in transportation. So, the, so, then you have to establish the agglomeration like sintering and pelletization plant and like that and, and another energy intensive unit. So, and when in this process you can directly use the fine ores and you are eliminating all those uh, unnecessary units of agglomeration, pelletization, sintering and the big saving in energy and environmental term in that way. Use of legs expensive fuel. So, here you do not have to use even coke and again one more environmental problem and there because you can use uh, coal directly and it is less expensive. No physical and chemical limitation, more productivity, low investment these are also work like a DRI, uh, DRI sort of way uh, you can uh, 
put the small units at localized place. So, quite a low investment in that way becoming a little popular. It is not an no environmental problem, uh, uh, environmental uh, reduced environmental problem. Complete stored system with immediate response to the change, like un, unlike bla, blast furnace, when you want to see the effect of anything or any change, it takes hours. Here, you will get the immediate response of any change which you want to do it. So, these are the quite few advantage of smelting reduction processes. So, smelting reduction processes can be characterized either a single stage smelting reduction or two stage smelting reduction. And the single stage uh, smelting, okay, uh, so soft, soft furnace process, Corex, Sumitomo, Kawasaki. Um, electric arc. So, these are uh, smelting reduction processes. 